So here we are at uh, Shroud Hearth Barrow for our first Skyrim archaeological survey exploration of the uh, of the ancient Nord tombs, and I'm quite excited to be starting this project. It's taken us a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it yeah, has. Yeah, but we're here. Some technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Uh, technical fun. Technical fun. Mm -hmm. We've been having. Um, but but Shroud Hearth Barrow is a good a good place to start because. Uh, it's one of the first barrows that you come across. It's not one of the first ancient Nordic sites that you're sent to in the campaign. Uh, the first of those is much larger, much more complicated than this site. But this is actually a, a, a barrow that's at the foot of the throat of the world, at the bottom of the stairs that lead to High Hrothgar. And uh, it's also an interesting little site to start with because it's not too complicatedly connected to other parts of the map for example there's no extended quest lines or other mm -hmm. things or literature in the in-game world uh we uh of course will be highlighting the uh, the location of this site using the uh uesp skyrim map and the it's amazing it's an amazing map that they put together and of course we li we'll link to that on the on the blog and also in in any attached information to this uh video or stream but um Really, I suppose. Uh, just, just, just before we we really get get going on this, uh, what 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 are you wanting to achieve with these explorations of the barrows, Liv? Well, I think that the barrows themselves are a great way to see both how deep the lore goes, mm -hmm. uh, and also the actual archaeology of Skyrim. Mm. Uh, because as an archaeologist, you can walk through Skyrim and go like, "Oh, look, work." Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. But well, also in that, in that sense, you see you see the ruins of uh, relatively recent settlements, more ancient settlements. You see uh, whole cultures like the Dwemer who have who are now disappeared, Indeed. and uh, and th this is just a, a a nice gentle place to start our survey. After we've done all the barrows, who knows where we'll go on to? But, but <laughs> let's start. Let's start with the barrows today. Yes. <laughs> so, um, shall we? Shall we approach Shroud yes. Hearth Barrow? So we're coming up from Iverstead, the yeah. little town that's just right by it. And Iverstead, uh, it's actually it's, it's worth worthwhile saying um, that uh, that this ruin is located northeast of Iverstead. It has two interior zones, Shroud Hearth Barrow and Shroud Hearth Depths. And the mm -hmm. residents of Ivarstead believe the barrow is haunted. Uh, mm -hmm. Wilhelm, or Wilhelm, the local innkeeper, provides uh, the Dragonborn, you as the player, uh, with the most information about the barrow, citing the example of uh, Windilius Gartharian, an adventurer who tried exploring the barrow a year earlier. But never returned. Goodness me. And it's, so go on. Oh, it's it's a hard life. It is a hard being life. An adventure. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially being an archaeologist in in Skyrim. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we're going to come across these sorts of things. I, can... I think the two goes together. Yeah. Sort of. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. You you kind of become an adventurer <laughs> if you choose to do archaeology <laughs> in Skyrim. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, at the very least, you become very adept at avoiding. Uh, traps and evil wizard types. Um, now, uh, you, as we've just recently, as we approach the barrow here, uh, um, are you struck by anything in particular about its setting and the landscape? Well, it's actually put on a bit of a hill, mm -hmm. uh, and we, as we can see, it's hard to say if it's made by choice or if it's a later invention but there is a path going from the main village mm. straight up to the stairs of the burrow mm. that said though the main road itself sort of almost bypasses the burrow doesn't it indeed it, it sort of comes into the mid the center center of, of ivarstead avoiding this and so you do get a sense that that this is a priority probably for the ivarstead community to have access mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily for people people aren't necessarily expected to stop by casually as they're going on their business and passing by. And so, that's something you can see on most barrows. They are they will not have clear paths leading all the way up to them. Yeah. So that's is the main road just over there to the right, I think? Uh yes. 
You can see the bridge there. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And going off, uh, going off in that direction. Yeah. Okay. And um, now, so so it's obviously it's on a rise from the perspective of Ivarstead, uh, mm -hmm. but it looks. It, it, did the land flatten out to around around the back though? Is it is it much less on a hill? Further, further yes. over there, further I'm to the east. I'm on top of the barrow now. Yeah. And as we can see, the hill continues. Yeah, yeah. So from, from again, from the you know, employing phenomenology from the perspective of Ivarstedians, if that's a, if that's a word, uh, the barrow is is on a rise, but for, again, for everyone else, it's not in a, necessarily a super prominent place in the landscape. So Indeed. it's all focusing in back in on this community here, which is quite Indeed. quite interesting. Uh, which also. I, I, I think you have to take in account the top of the world and mm -hmm. uh, stairs up to High Rothgar yeah. when talking about this barrow. Yeah. Because oh, that's that's a good point actually. Do, do you think do you think do you think it, uh, the the fact that it is essentially just across the bridge from the bottom of the stairs that lead to the top of the throat of the world uh, that's that that is a significant spot to be. I think so, and I I also think that its existence so close to something that is so culturally important to mm -hmm. the rest of Skyrim mm -hmm. points to the barrow maybe being more for the local residents mm -hmm. uh, because it hasn't been put in direct connection with the stairs. No, no, that's true, that's true. So this is almost like possibly, possibly their stepping stone to that greater significance, but it, again possibly. it's not necessarily for other people to, to stop by. Indeed. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, as we as we approach the entrance, then if we get get off this this lovely sacred uh, site, <laughs> <laughs> they were standing on someone's grave. Um, as we approach the site, uh, for example, I, I mean the closest analogy I can think of um, would be almost like a maybe a, a, a Neolithic uh, sort of chamber tomb, oh. where there is evidence often in the real world for people feasting outside and communing as it were with the dead whereas it seems that in Skyrim this activity happens quite quite often inside that space doesn't it there's not Indeed. really much happening out here it seems to be a bit no. weedy there's no real offerings and although well, there is some human remains just there in the entrance which is interesting it is and the there's story. also these obviously disturbed mm. Uh, mm. and broken resting places and coffins yeah yeah just on the inside yeah so do you think that this is this is the beginning of a of a series of stages that bodies go through in these spaces then do they do they, are these recently deceased perhaps do you think and then they'll be possibly i down? also would say that it might be a question of status oh okay okay um, but which way round? Is it is it higher up or lower down? Uh, I would say that the further into the barrow you get, uh, the more high status you seem to be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about the, what about the poor guy who's just got his head in the in the entrance? I mean, do <laughs> well, well. <laughs> we... I bet they might that be Ivar Stead's drunkard. <laughs> He's just yeah. Like... <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, that said, though, actually, I mean, speaking, of, we. we, we Looking at the dis at the dishevelled and disturbed nature of these remains, it's likely actually that, that, that that's a that's that's a, uh, as they say unstratified remains over there in Indeed. the doorway. But it could also be a case that actually uh, even the most you know it's it's better to be as close to as possible these tombs in death, uh, and therefore maybe if you're not technically really allowed or you're not welcome in this tomb, maybe someone has put your skull there just on the off chance that it might help you. You know, get get on in in the afterlife as it maybe was. so uh, we also have to take in consideration the serious amount of looting that happens yeah yeah in Skyrim. yeah not least by the dragonborn him or herself i mean yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> of course you, you you wouldn't want to comment on, at all on, on whether or not you've looted these tombs no, um, no, no. <laughs> okay well uh, one of the things that I always notice as well when we when we come into these spaces is that the candles are lit. Now, yes. now, obviously, we can say, well, that's just that's game design. They're lit because 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 they're there. Uh, but it, it, within the world, it kind of makes me think that this space is at least being uh, intermittently used or respected in some way, and people mm -hmm. come here either for remembrance or actually for practical reasons. Because further round towards the back of this space. There is 
in fact, uh, a table for seemingly preparing the dead, almost like an embalming process, isn't there? Indeed. Uh, um, again, this this makes me wonder whether what happens is you leave you leave recently deceased in these upper uh, cysts or kists, and then you uh, you bring them to the embalming table to prepare them for the next stage, and they go down into the barrow. Uh, but then again, as you say, it could be a, a social hierarchy thing. Maybe actually, you, only people of a certain status get to be eventually put onto this table and prepared, and then taken down. I mean, are there any tools or anything that we can see on on the? Uh, uh, yes, we have table? some embalming tools. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some linens to yeah. wrap, mm -hmm. and we have an urn, mm -hmm. possibly for organs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or for belongings, since you can find coin in those. <laughs> More often than not. Well, actually, that, that's something as well that I've always wondered about. And again, as, as I imagine as these as these surveys accrue, we'll be commenting on these specifics less and less because we'll have already commented on them. But the fact that so many pots in these tombs have a single coin in them. Now, again, that's a game design element, you could say. But also, a single coin in so many of them, it that could be something that's symbolic of, of something. You know, so maybe sim symbolic of a full... A full hoard. I mean, in the Roman world, a pot filled with coins was a was a a talent. I believe it was called. It was a it was a weight of coinage or gold, and so maybe a single coin within the pot is sort of saying, well, essentially, yeah, you've got a pot of gold here. <laughs> you know, this will this will do for the afterlife. This kind of thing. Technically. Technically, yeah. It's a pot and it has gold in it. So yeah, it's yeah a exactly. Yeah, gold. yeah. We care about our loved ones. <clears throat> We also want to have a house. Yeah. <laughs> um, so further round, then on the on the other side, because this this space has two entrances, isn't it? It's almost like a croissant of um, of a space. Uh, and then, okay, so we have more of the same as well, um, with uh, and you. yeah, with more disturbed remains. Um, do you think that? Do you think that the, uh, that this space? Uh, is te architecturally tended to, or do you think that that part of its character is in fact that it's allowed to to weather and fall apart? Because it's just strange that you've got blocks of stone falling into some of these. I think places. I think it can be very tended to as mm. a structure. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that it would be in a better state if it was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I also don't know if the dragon cult that would be the builders of these barrows yeah. mm -hmm. are active mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. within society, or if they are a dead civilization. Uh, I think they're shunned. They are, well, yes, yeah. yeah, that's true, actually. And in that sense, these ancient Nord barrows are uh, are a remnant of when the residents of Skyrim were worshipping dragons in a, a time long ago. Um, but also, yeah. uh, I suppose in that sense, I mean, because I'm curious then about what what is there for the relationship between the current people of Ivarstead and this place as a space for the dead? Because there's nowhere else around these places where we see graves or indeed, other and burial. we have we can go come across graveyards in other places in Skyrim. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So obviously, they do tend to their dead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but but maybe there's some, possibly a, a folk, or a countryside version of that that still attaches the, dis the recently deceased to these spaces. Possibly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Um, but also as well, of course, we're we're, we're operating in the context that that uh, Wilhelm, the local innkeeper, has told us that this is this is a haunted barrow. So, uh, you know, that that, that, that and, might explain some of it. In that. When he explained that to us, he also asked us to do something about it because it was scaring the local townspeople. So obviously, yeah. they aren't comfortable with the ghosts being in the barrow. No, no, or the, yeah, the Draugr. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, shall we enter Shroud Heart Indeed. Barrow? Okay. In we go. Ooh, level 43. Yeah. Uh, and this is a redo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm up to about two or three hundred hours in Skyrim. I know that's not that's not as hardcore as you, possibly. Um, 
But uh, okay, so we're entering down so. into the barrow, and immediately, obviously, we have a wooden descent. And this this is interesting because outside the barrow, in the upper level, there's no real hint of wood being part of the structure. And I wonder if that's part of this phenomenological aspect, whereby outside everything is stone, everything is solid, everything is impressive. Inside, actually, if you look at the ceiling again, there, um, inside even the um, uh, the 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 structure itself is a little bit ramshackle, a little bit held together, uh, but also crucially, it doesn't have to be made of, made out of stone. Indeed. Uh, perhaps once you're in this sort of slightly more private place, they don't have to be, as it were, pretending for for onlookers anymore. That, that, yeah, Indeed. That I mean, I I would say that if they wanted to give the same impression that they're doing on the outside, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would have. Uh, had some masonry or something in mm. the ceiling. Mm. Now it's just a sh sheer structure and what seems to be some kind of filler material to yep. create roof. Yeah. And it's actually a relatively, I mean solid, but relatively crude construction as well of the staircase heading down. Indeed. Uh, and, and also seemingly little concern about the fact that, that it is a very damp space. There's lots of roots coming into the area. Indeed. Uh, perhaps in that sense the, these these wooden staircases were not intended to last forever. Maybe it's a case of once the tomb fills up, they allow the, the, the staircase to rot away. That's a possibility. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, I mean, in such damp conditions, stairs of, made of wood in this fashion will disappear. Mm. Mm. And therefore, actually, this, this could be deliberately a space which is uh, eventually going to actually be sealing the, the tomb from the outside world. I quite like that, actually. Yes. This, this could essentially yeah. be some sort of undead safety mechanism, actually. <laughs> uh, did you, and you know what? That, that's never occurred to me. <laughs> that's literally never occurred to me until just now. But I, I, I like that as an idea, actually. Yeah. yeah and that. I also think that you can see like the shift between temporary and permanent when you come to the bottom of the stairs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they actually have a laid floor beneath the wood yeah yeah exactly what they do precisely and and uh, so yeah I think that might be a feature that might be a, a reason for the wooden stairs mm, that's something to, to bear in mind for future, future doing stories. actual archaeology yeah oh, archaeology goodness, me, goodness me actual archaeology um, now uh, we also have this this uh, this bookcase here with uh, various Indeed. materials on it, and and this is this is something that's always interested me: is why do you need these little spaces uh, with books and things in a tomb? Um, did, does this speak to the notion that actually there would be ongoing rituals happening within the tomb, possibly when they uh, whether whether it's part of actually interring deceased people or whether it's part of just tending to the to the underground portion of the tomb that they need to have reference material. I would material. say so. I mean, if we look at what we have in this bookcase, mm -hmm. uh, we have linen wrappers, mm -hmm. uh, which would aid in taking care of the deceased, mm -hmm. either by in the process of embalming them and interring them, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe some maintenance after they have been interred. Yep, yep. Uh, we have a lantern. Mm -hmm. Which is handy when you're walking in the dark. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, and we have these ruined books that we don't know what they were, but mm. Mm. possibly uh, some rituals or um, connected to the practices within the crypt, maybe. Possibly, possibly, and also the fact that, in that sense, yeah, the fact that, that with the ruined book, you're not, you can't open them, you can't, you don't know what's inside them. It could be an element of, of maintenance and, and this kind of thing. And the, the soul gem as well is interesting because that because in <laughs> within Skyrim, you can trap the souls of defeated enemies within them, and uh, that that could speak to a a slight element of protection. Maybe, maybe they knew that 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 the deceased could come back. To life Indeed. And, yeah. I would also like to point out that the soul gem is resting next to a healing potion. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you got people coming I, down here. I can't imagine the healing potion being for the dead. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's almost like having a vicar 
who's looking after a graveyard who just has to be has to carry with him some zombie serum just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also quite like the uh, like the the intricate uh, nature of the decoration on on the bookcase as well on the sides and also actually on the inside it almost looks like a snail shell repeating uh, over and over again. Indeed, it's quite beautiful. Um, okay, cool, right. So, well, on we go onwards and, and yes. inwards, I guess. This is the first room then, coming down the stairs, mm -hmm. and it leads out into a hallway which is in a so-so condition, mm -hmm. as we can see. Mm -hmm. this bit looks like there's been a bit of collapse there. Indeed. Uh, and we can find interred dead just in the hallway, straight away. Yeah, so the, these, uh, these are, what, I suppose, what, what you would call catacombs in that sense. Um, and uh, th this isn't... In that, you know, again, in that sort of strict sense, this is not actually a barrow, therefore. Barrows tend to be, uh, well, actually, they tend to be com almost completely sealed, and they tend to be uh, spaces where you have to crawl, or you, you, you certainly can't walk around and jump up and down in. This feels much more like a catacomb, the sort of thing that you might find, again, in, in the real world, in a place like maybe Rome, or, or this sort of place. Um but uh, but okay, and so 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 what do you think then of this of this as this theory then of increasing importance as we go it goes through because well, these guys are okay. buried just outside of what looks like a fairly substantial gate. Indeed, and I would also say that it's if we discount the collapsed pillar, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing that you would see stepping out of the doorway coming down the stairs is this guarding interred person behind the gates. Yes, that's true. Yeah. You wouldn't see these people. No, no. You would see someone guarding the barrow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that's true, actually, yeah. So you'd, you'd see not so much someone who's, like, who's laid to rest, but someone who is upright and looking back at you at the indeed. corridor. Yeah. That's interesting, and so in that sense, maybe, maybe then actually, though these people who are laid, laid, laying um, in the catacombs outside, are almost—it's almost like a, <laughs> almost like a nightclub, and that's the bouncer. You know, they're waiting to get in. They're not yet on the list. <laughs> maybe uh, I would also say that they, they don't get the same protection as the others or maybe they aren't as dangerous depending on how you view, yeah. like view it yeah uh, since they're on this side of the gate yeah and also, also especially if we're looking at the wooden staircase as a potential rot away or even actually a burnable structure a structure that can Indeed. be rapidly destroyed deliberately as a safety mechanism this metal gate is another seal as well and it's not so much necessarily about keeping people out as possibly keeping these 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 uh, potentially dangerous drauger within. That's quite cool, actually. Also, um, as well, all across on the stones, you see lovely sort of spiralling uh, engravings and artwork as well. Indeed. It's very rem reminiscent of, um, of uh, places like the Boyne Valley Neolithic tombs. Indeed. Beautiful stuff. And also, actually, there's similar as well to some stones that you see in... Um, in parts of Scandinavia as well. It is. Yeah. And I would say that it indicates that this isn't an import unimportant part of the barrow. No. Because no. it's still decorated and it's done very neatly and to great extent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that takes time. <laughs> yeah, so it's not so important, it's just a different category than Indeed. What's, what's beyond the, this gateway. Okay. Uh, okay, sh shall we go through the gates then? Yes. <laughs> And this is a great piece of drama, I would say. Yeah, yeah, uh, especially the lighting. He's lit indeed. from below. Yeah, yeah. And and then you you also have further catacomb internments on the on both sides of him. So actually, indeed. that that adds to this notion of um, of uh, oh, actually, and you've got people on the left and 
Indeed. Uh, so oh, when you're goodness. walking and if you turn around, you have one on each side behind you. Yeah, yeah. So, you. so you're immediately surrounded in that sense. That's quite interesting. And also, can you see that there's two holes in the wall uh, to each side of the doorway there? There's actually, um, is that, is there, are those little recesses for candles, perhaps? I think they uh, are. I would, uh, I would also maybe say that it can be a trap. Oh, possibly. That's, that's, that's a good point, yes. Yeah. Interesting. And then, of course, we have a locked gateway here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, an open gateway here and a way back. Mm hmm. So you can't just walk through it all in no. one go. You have to know the procedure to be able to go forth. Yeah, no, you do. You do. And, uh, and presumably, if. Uh, when this was a uh, a more active space in terms of people big visiting it more regularly, there might have been um, you wouldn't have necessarily had the time to leisurely figure your way through. You know, if you were, if you didn't know your way through, you're going to get caught at some point trying to make your way through. Whereas because this space is essentially abandoned to the living, we can figure out how to get past the traps and, and sort, you know, sort of sort, sort of feel our way through as opposed to indeed yeah. and i would also remind us uh that we are the dragonborn <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we have some experience that a regular visitor might lack that's true that's true that's a good point yes yeah um okay so then we go through to another sort of what well, again what almost feels like a sort of a, a bit of a staging area um with further uh, tools and uh, what well, looks like a no well, actually basically another embalming table, but actually Indeed. much more in the way of um, well, it almost feels like someone's private study. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it sure does feel like it has been left in a hurry. Mm, it it is as neat as the bookcase that we just saw. No, that's true. Uh, yeah. We have books just laying about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but we also again we have um, uh, little slots for people to to be laid to rest as well on either side. It's mm -hmm. it's such a it's such an interesting just uh, juxtaposition of fairly mundane storage and uh, in that sense the, a place where people are stored forever, as it were. It's mm -hmm. it's it's so um, it's. Well, again, it, it it all speaks to the idea that this is actually a place where people are, are doing things with confidence. They're confident that, 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 that they're not being observed. Presumably, you wouldn't have bodies and books next to each other outside. Whereas no. inside, you can get on with whatever rituals you're doing. You can do the business of the day. And also, as well, it, because it's all sealed, there's a sense that, you know, almost like, a, I don't know, priest in the sort of in a sanctum or something you know you, you, ha you have you, there's a certain amount of of mundane ritual that that's bound to bound to occur within these private spaces i suppose absolutely yeah mm. and also it i mean this is the space i feel that opens up the burrow further mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to know this space to be able to go forth that's a good point actually yeah 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 in that sense, this is this is a uh, this is uh, well actually this is kind of like a, a a security guard's office in that sense. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, a spirit spiritual Here, security please. guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you know do you know the secrets? Well, I have enough health levels to survive either way. Uh huh. As you just saw. So that one. Oh, is indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. Now I think there is a, just a slight delay for me, but uh, but nonetheless, yeah. As you as you're uh, you're unlocking this mechanism, yes, you have to be able to withstand. Is that is that possibly then what the health is for as you enter the tomb? Someone getting it wrong on a bad day. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, well, it's not impossible. I mean, you wouldn't want the regular priest 
dying doing his job just because he forgot what lever to pull. No, that's true. But also, presumably, uh, I mean, is it so? Is it possible to open that gate without hurting yourself? Yes, it is. Okay, okay. So, so they, in that sense, it, it's it's very specifically a test uh, of uh, you know, it's a, it's a it's a lock to which if you know if you know the answer, you'll get the you have essentially the key. And Indeed. if you don't know the answer, you're likely to get injured, if not dead, killed. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. okay. And it also, the only way to go forth is to lock the way out. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's almost like a... Um, a fail-safe. Uh, well, a fail-safe, or, or, or like a... Uh, oh, what do they call it? A, um, uh, it's like leaving a, a, spa a spaceship or a, a, or a submarine. There's an airlock. That's it. An airlock. Indeed. It's that type of situation. Yeah. Whereas again, this is this is a, a spiritual or a monster airlock. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> yep. So now we can go forth. Okay. Go forth. And we have more locked doors. Mm-hmm. Or more locked doors. Okay. Now again, you get you very much get the impression that the 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 solid lock doors that now from memory, I think I think I've, I, I, as far as I recall, behind that lock the solid lock doors, is there a, a standing up Draugr? Can't quite recall. And then beyond, obviously I beyond the, the barred it's... gates, you go deeper into the barrow. Well, it's an easy way to find out. Okay, yeah, let's check. Yep. Or is it, is it a very a important cupboard? archaeological tool? Yeah, yeah. The lockpick. <laughs> 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 Do you know actually my um, my amazing wife uh, has learned to pick locks. Uh, she's got quite good. Mm. Yeah. You know. Um. Although she, she's not an argument. Oh no! This is not the space I thought it was. This is a place with a treasure chest and indeed and a trap and a trap yeah now those buttons do we have any sense of what what the spiral um the spiral sort of design on those buttons indicates because it, in that sense it's not a great trap mechanism when you can when they highlight the button for you or do you think it's a case of uh normal people who aren't as it were the dragonborn or who aren't <laughs> uh, priests uh, of this cult Work they simply won't spot that design, and they'll. Well, they'll I'm also it. thinking that it is. It's obviously a warning sign for the initiated to not step on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it also, I mean, it could be that normal people know about it, but if you're in a fight, if you're trying to protect the barrow, or if you're an outsider breaking in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you won't know that sign. No, that's true, that's true, and especially given that an awful lot of the, the rest of the barrow is fairly innocently, intricately decorated. Indeed. I guess you wouldn't necessarily know. I, I, I suppose in that sense, yes, we're, we're, we, we are observing this from the standpoint of having put hundreds of hours into this game. Whereas actually, I seem to recall the first time I played it, I didn't realise that that was a button. Indeed. I, I think I did actually step on it, yeah. Okay, so what, what just out of interest... And it's also placed right beside the door, or behind the door. Yeah. So yeah. it's the first thing you will step on when you go in. Especially if you go, ooh, treasure chest, and you don't even Indeed. look down. Indeed, and just, la la la. <laughs> so, uh, so presumably if you step on that button, the six holes behind the treasure chest will shoot arrows at you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Unless you have taken feats that make you so light that they won't react. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're a light-footed, light-fingered archaeologist. I like it. Uh, again, we have up, standing up, up standing. Uh, well, Citizen. not Draugr, but certainly deceased people. Yeah. Okay. And do you think actually that 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 all all dead people become Draugr, or not? Or do you think it's just certain dead people? Well, it seems to be certain people, mm -hmm. or I don't know if it's a natural process, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or if they're, if it's decided that they shall remain the guardians of the uh, barrows. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, perhaps uh, as part of their internment, they are assigned that role, whether through ritual or even potentially through the manner of their death. They may actually choose to. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. I do um, not know enough about the culture to make a no, fair no. assessment. No, no. Fun uh, game developing fact, though. Did you know that the Draugr are assigned their appearance randomly? No. Yeah. So you can have um, 
a very female looking draugr with a with a man's head and a beard nice because it's it's completely procedurally procedurally generated it's quite funky uh so the treasure chest appears to have a um a booby trap oh. should we unleash the booby trap just to show what it does oh for go science on. go on then for science okay and I won't loot it because we're archaeologists. Yep. Ah! Amethyst, okay. Golden dwarven battle axe. Oh, okay. and there we go. <laughs> there we have the culprit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. They're actually they're actually again, there's a subtle warning there. They almost look like monsters' heads, don't they? Or snakes Indeed. or something. Yeah. It's an intricate it's an intricate mechanism. And so it, it, it sort of all it all leads me to wonder um, whether this material, you know, in terms of the stuff that's in that's, that's kept in these chests, uh, but also the people themselves and the books and everything else, whether whether this material is being stored down here for use by these people eventually. So some sort of belief that these, almost like an ancient Egyptian belief that they become physically useful to these people in the afterlife mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, Whether we can see that in ancient Nordic culture as well, that you yeah. bury people with with what they will need in their afterlife. That's yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I suppose yes, in individual graves as opposed to in big tomb structures. But you'll tend to have people mm. with swords and and foodstuffs and combs and things in in Nordic burials. Um, no, sorry, in in real world Scandinavian burials, not obviously Scandinavian yes. <laughs> Nordic. <laughs> um, but also, actually, uh, uh, so there's that potential, but also, I guess, there's the potential that this material is simply here to be useful to the undead, so they, to those people who are coming back to 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 life, as it were, some form of life within the tomb, or this material is here for the use of practitioners and people coming down here and um, and tending to the tomb. Indeed. I guess that's that's not entirely clear, is it? I guess it it's not, uh, and I would say that seeing how they have trapped it, mm -hmm. it's the the one thing we can say clearly it is that it's not for general consumption. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's behind a locked door. There are multiple traps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. So yeah. it's obviously that it's not meant for anyone to just break in and take it no no that's true yeah yeah it's not for normal people yeah no okay uh okay so uh, on we go then i guess yes so how do we access uh the space beyond the the barred gate then we have a chain uh-huh oh i see yes but you can't just run in you have to wait otherwise you get stabbed really Oh, blimey! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes, I, th I think, yeah, there is just a slight delay at my end, but wow, okay, that's great. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, yeah, that's not like a normal, um, that's not a, um, well, I, but again, that's interesting, because, so that, though, that is, that's access inwards, though, that's being discouraged. Yeah. So, so this idea of, of, the, so having this seal, in the, in that first space where one gate open once one gate closes, but then uh, and also having the burn burnable or rotting steps at the beginning, seemingly prevents access from the inside. But that's definitely discouraging access further down into the space as well. It is interesting. Uh, so do you think then that actually there's a balance here where they're trying to discourage maybe looters or people messing with their dead, but also they're that aware that the dead so. here are in are inherently dangerous. I would say so. I mean, mm. you can also see that they're, I mean, in the behavior of the Draugr, mm -hmm. you, you can sneak past them if you're good enough at sneaking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means that they activate based on activity. Yeah, yeah. So they react to someone coming into the space and attacks them. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're not just walking around attacking each other. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah, and so again, the dra so maybe, maybe again, maybe actually, maybe it's still a safety, an element of safety for the living, 
in so much as if you go down there, Draugr are more likely to attack you. Indeed. Possibly. And it's also, not necessarily about stopping looting. You have you have the me mechanism there that if you know to wait, uh -huh. you won't be hurt. Yes. Yeah. But if you just run along, you'll get stabbed. So again, it's it's speaking to that sense of the informed, the initiated. Indeed. As opposed to Joe Bloggs, yeah. Okay. But then again, I mean, I imagine Joe Bloggs would have been by now stabbed, uh, no, shot by poison arrows. Um, twice. Yeah, twice. Uh, presumably set off uh, poison arrows. Uh, yeah. Also, yes, in that second room, and then uh, stabbed by spears, and probably dead. Probably dead by now. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably dead by now. <laughs> okay. Um, so, where, which way? Which way do you want to go then? Well, I think we can stop a moment to just realize that the doors are very differently decorated. Yeah. And yeah. maybe that's a hint. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 In that sense, the door to the right is is different, and it is uh, something new. Maybe that is the way forward. Um, the door ahead is very similar to the the door that was uh, the door that that led into the chamber with the treasure chest just just a little bit earlier. Open iron door. Hmm. Well, I'll leave it to you. Which one do you want to do? Uh, I, I'm taking the one on the, the the less embellished one. Okay. Yep. Right. So we are into another catacomb chamber. And we come into a living room of sorts. Yeah. Yeah. A big space. Very much. Yeah. We have a burning hearth. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We have boots. No, is, is this where the, where the where the um the name shroud hearth comes from? Perhaps. Maybe. Could this be the hearth with boots? It also seems to have seen some recent use. Yeah. If we see on how how much fresher everything is, That's we true. have a pelt rug. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm some a freshly chopped firewood. Rug. Yeah. Yeah. An alchemy lab. Sleeping bag. Yeah. Uh huh. A satchel. And I would say that you can see that these things might not be original. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, the, the, the table and the chair is seem to have seen far more use. Yeah. The other yeah. things. Yeah. So the, 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 the so the 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 yes the, the these things are are not are not as old as the tomb itself. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Which That's is it. that we might have found our missing adventurers' sleeping quarters. Quite possibly. Yes. Now, just uh, just behind you, uh, just behind the um, directly across from the from the half there, is that in fact a, a secret exit and entrance? It looks like it. Uh -huh. Sure looks like it. Yep. Okay. Mm. Which... We, can't, we can't get in it from this end, though. No. No. Okay. Okay, cool. We also have the, that, that interesting pottery as well at the bottom of the bookshelf, which is quite cool. With the, uh, the, the sort of yes. zig zigzag pyramidal um, motif. Which again, as you say, is distinct for for this particular tomb. That doesn't seem to be part of the uh, the ancient Nord culture. No. Necessarily. Okay. Hmm. But it's a dead end anyway. Yeah, it is yeah. a dead end. So to get further in, we have to walk back. And. Oh, actually, no. There you go. There, there, there was there was another pot there. So actually, maybe I just haven't spotted those pots elsewhere. Oh, is that a, another booby trap? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> You're not willing to to, to 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 be damaged for science on this one. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Okay. 
Now, uh, just out of interest, on uh, PC, how do you get yeah. um, a notification of... Oh, is it a noise notification when you're picking the lock? You get like a click type sound. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I've been playing, um, obviously, consoles for too long, and uh, on the more recent iterations on the console, you get a, 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 a physical vibration when it, it clicks into place. So, yeah, uh, did, I'm spoiled in that sense. Uh, but okay, so so presumably these two would have uh, would have horribly gassed you or something or burned you alive. I, I, yeah, I would guess so. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Still, we're not and, having that. And we have also a fairly substantial change in architecture in terms of the doorway here. Indeed, and the size of the trap. I yeah. mean, from what we have seen so far, it's been small holes hidden in the walls. Uh huh. Uh huh. This is. Huge. Yeah, substantial, monstrous traps. Yeah, okay. And but it speaks to this sense of escalation. You're going further into the tomb, the more intensely they don't want either you to proceed or things to come out. Indeed. Okay. And then we have a huge hallway. Yeah, yeah. In, ma in many ways, a beautiful, um, beautiful space actually. Indeed. Mm. And also we have these intricate carvings. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, showing people and gods and the culture. Yeah, well, and actually, that's that's uh, very reminiscent of the style that we see. Um, there's a key. Uh, uh, is it called bas relief? Bas relief uh, mm -hmm. carving uh, later on in the game, where it tells you the story of uh, Parthenax um, in, in ancient times being defeated, the dragon of Sky. Indeed. It's a very similar artistic style, although I think these are less these are less fine than those ones, but they are nonetheless beautiful sculptures. Are those uh, are those butterflies? Do you think emanating from around? Uh, I think so. Uh, what figures? stars maybe? This oh yeah, almost like like owls on that one. Yeah. Seems to be fairies or dragonflies on the first one. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Okay, very pretty. Maybe we'll have to go looking for some books in Skyrim to tell us uh, a little bit of Indeed. this story. But nonetheless, flying, flying motifs there, okay. Mm -hmm. And the flying seems to be a common demeanor in all of them. Yeah, wings, uh, and, oh, what are they? Dragons, I would ah. say. Oh, okay, okay. So, oh, I see. Yes, sorry. Those, those are the claws for the beasts above, aren't they? Really? Yeah. Sun and moon motif as well. Indeed. Mhm. Mm Actually, could that be a werewolf? Or is that simply a warrior wearing wolf skin? Do you think? No, it could be that the whole depiction is a werewolf. Okay. Because if you step back and look at it, uh, you have what seems to be a wolf skull and shoulders on the top. Yeah. yeah you and do. then we have the claws and the arms coming out in what yeah. I thought was dragons. Yeah. And then we have the woman with the sword and the armor beneath. There's also <laughs> a st uh, stars as well. There's a star up to the right hand side there. And the moons on either side of her. Yeah. I okay. would say this is a clear werewolf motif. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, interesting. So are, could these be ele um, people who control different element elemental creatures then? It could be. Because it looks like you have people be people carrying recently the recently deceased, maybe it looks like royalty perhaps, king mm -hmm. or something being carried. Um, and I think they're being carried to meet these people. Or maybe they, to be guarded by them. Could be, yeah, could be. It could be that these people maybe, maybe they uh, they guard some sort of transition, and maybe actually that's the whole point of this space. Maybe this space is a, in that sense, a transition transitional space from one significant. Part I mean, of I would say another. that it is. I mean, you have a clear transition in how the burrow is formed uh -huh. yeah, from yeah. before you enter this space and afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And this is clearly a place. Of some symbolic and rather grand st 
stature. It's, it's almost sort of a, a reflection in that sense on indeed on that transition, I guess. And I'm thinking that this might tell the story of the space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be guardians or important people of the for the barrow itself. Mm. Um, or maybe just hold some other specific meaning for the ones being passed through. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But again, that, that's something that's something for us to note. It warrants further research. Indeed. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it is that kind of research that, as an archaeologist, you would go to the local folklore and historical text to find. Exactly, yes, yes. And, and thankfully, the world of Skyrim has plenty of texts texts Indeed. to refer to. Uh, okay, cool, right. So it's all getting a bit misty. On we go. And here we have a ruined space with a table. Mm. It's almost like a, ru yeah, a ruined embalming table. Yeah. yeah. And straight in front of that we have this person with fire and mm. still the procession going on that's true yeah yeah does, does that does that continue around um, sort of around the corner almost as it were no no so I can say from here you, you, just, you descend further so that down. is the last picture yeah and that last picture is spaced straight in front of the door that you enter the space in. Mm, mm. So you walk to it. Yeah, so you have these six murals leading up to that final mural. Uh, and actually, uh, did you notice the cat on that final one? The cat? Yeah, there's a cat. Bottom left. Isn't that a dog? Oh, is it a dog? I thought it was a cat. I think it's a Rottweiler of sorts. Oh yeah, no, no, it's more like a, it's more like a dog. So it's just that. Uh, sorry, sorry, I got you excited for no reason. You're just trying to, <laughs> just trying to please me. <laughs> <coughs> no, yes, I thought it was a cat. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So uh, down we go, and uh, seemingly past another uh, another table, another spot yeah. where people can refer to or prepare for. Yes, yeah, so and more books, more materials. And then come out, and I would say that this, this space or this entrance, seems to be a service entrance, if I might put it that way. Yeah, it's almost it's almost like it's uh, it's off stage. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it isn't the focus of the room. You don't come out into a room and get it straight away. No. It's not meant to impress you as you enter so who, who who do you think where do you think what do you think is the focus of this room then? where do you think the i think the, the audience as it were would start? Room is here <laughs> okay so we have a pedestal with a book yeah 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 we have two very very neatly put coffins uh -huh. and yeah. then you have another stage leading up to one central place of rest. Yeah. And if we walk down the stage <laughs> and enters here, we have two smaller resting places. Yeah. Yeah. But also resting and places we have action. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can keep talking. I'm just going to make sure we're safe to continue this investigation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, next to those two smaller uh, tombs, there are uh, rings attached to poles, seemingly. Um, to Incidentally, you've got some lovely weaponry. Um, the rings attached to poles uh, that look as though they are, they are there to restrain people. You can maybe attach a rope or a chain to them. Uh, I wonder if there's an element of... Well, I suppose initially my mind goes to sacrifice. Uh, maybe punishment? Maybe forced reflection, given the sort of the bank of candles that are close to those uh, those graves? Um, it's, it's, uh, it warrants a further look, 
Uh, but the, we'll let you, let you deal with these Draugr first. Yeah, That's fine. You can keep talking. I'm just... Uh, I'm, I mean, this is an important part of being an archer <laughs> in Skyrim. Did you you have to be able to deal with the Draugr yeah. as, <laughs> as you come along. With because this... it doesn't matter that the dungeon says that it's cleared. Uh -huh. If you've been gone for more than a month, then uh -huh. they have spawned. Do you think? Um, uh, do you think this would be part of the first year course? Uh, it would be a case of, you know, maybe day two. Yeah, okay, you've got your trial <laughs> now. Fighting. How to deal with drought? <laughs> you just go. You go into the lecture hall, and there at the front of the room is this twitching undead <laughs> chained to the wall, and uh, just. So, today we're going to learn. <laughs> I, I have collected this for you, which means that your professor went out into a tomb, collected some dragon, didn't kill them, and brought them back for you to practice on. <laughs> Indeed, these are the weakest parts of the Draugr. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, actually, the, the very fact that the, 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 the Draugr sometimes collapse into magical uh, humming piles of ash maybe speaks a little bit to the fact that they are imbued with something that turns them into Draugr as opposed to simply dead or embalmed dead people. Indeed. So uh, it also depends on what you're carrying. Uh, I am carrying the Dawnbreaker, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is especially mean to Draugars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel that as someone walking into tombs where I know there might they might be, I should be equipped as best <laughs> as I can to be dealing with them. That's true, but not. But I suppose mm, nonetheless, even though even though you are dealing, you are essentially yeah carrying a, a undead, um, uh, defying weapon. Uh, the fact that that can do that to them, it wouldn't do that to a to a normal living Indeed. person. Yeah, it probably speaks to something going on. And I wonder whether that's a case of, of these these dead become so soaked in, I don't know, the atmosphere or whatever it else, whatever else is happening in these places, mm -hmm. and they simply reach a critical mass and then become Draugr, or whether they 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 whether they they consume something or whether they are subject to a ritual that creates them as Draugr. This is, again, mm -hmm. this is probably worth worth examining. Although, the, and then notice the spiral again on the pedestal there. It's very mm. reminiscent of the stuff that's on the um, on the trap uh, mechanisms. It is. Hmm. Uh, one thing that I thought of uh, as an archaeologist as I fought this Draugr uh, is that <laughs> the, the mere presence of them yeah, uh, yeah. and the, the fact that you need to fight yeah. uh, as you try to examine or excavate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, means that uh, things rarely end up in situ that's a very good point yeah 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 it's, <laughs> it disturbs it's, the context of the tomb <laughs> yeah yeah by definition yeah we absolutely have that said that that, that is an ongoing issue in real world archaeology and uh, frankly in any science where we make observations isn't it the idea yeah. that you are by observing you you, uh, by definition, you alter the thing that you're observing. Um, Maybe but... not that forcefully, as accidentally <laughs> knocking a book of a pillar when you're trying to strike something down with a sword. But no, indeed, indeed, you're you're, you're like a Skyrim version of Ian Hodder. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're considering the interpretation at the trial's edge. Uh, well, forcefully. It's almost like instead of getting your students to record themselves excavating, you're going and kicking the trench wall. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you just go back to to those uh, to that that lowest of the of these three stages, then um, do you think then perhaps there's this element of people are processed in from one of the, these seemingly side entrances that we came in through mm -hmm. and they are maybe attached to these poles and something occurs maybe this is where the draugr are made actually maybe this is at that pedestal maybe something happens to them here i mean it seems it gives a feeling of that someone's going to stand by the pill or by the, the pedestal by the altar maybe pedestal yeah uh, and talk to you yeah, yeah, it's like a lectern, yeah. yeah. So and then you have these two tombs on each side and the big one behind, giving yeah. a very 
very well, actually, actually reinforcing the speaker's status they literally mm -hmm. have these big things behind them and you're looking at him or her with these things behind them that's quite Thank interesting you. actually yeah yeah and so i mean I, I, at this stage i quite like this idea that maybe you're in you're in this space and whether willingly or not you're being told well for the greater good you're going to become a draugr <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to protect this wonderful tomb um and well done and maybe that's why you have the chainable space next to you or maybe, maybe the chains aren't always required because actually there aren't any chains visible um so maybe you know maybe more often than not they, they these people were volunteers but there i mean i would say that you don't put small pedestals with hoops to be able to chain things up if you're not a thinking of using them. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. So there probably would, would be a few people who would be like, I don't want to be here! <laughs> like, no, no, you're going to sit there and uh, and listen to... Actually, didn't they used to chain um, in certain uh, religious Christian orders? Then they, isn't there something that goes across people's legs in pews? Yeah. Um, I'm trying, oh, come on, is it... Uh, Maybe it's an American um, sort of seventeenth, eighteenth century thing. So that's worth researching anyway at some point. Mm -hmm. um, okay, right, but, uh, but obviously this this I seems mean, to be a slightly Sweden, more extreme. I mean, in Sweden, mostly just poked people with poles to make them stop falling asleep by that time. <laughs> poked uh. them with poles. <laughs> Although actually, I noticed that that uh, obviously the, all the door the doors have closed around us as well. Indeed. Yeah. So was that was that when you when the uh, the Draugr woke up? As they woke up, all the doors closed. Right. Yeah. Okay. And is this the mechanism to open it? A fancy little lever in the back yeah, end yeah. of the room. Which again speaks to you either having the power to, or the I don't know the know how the know how to subdue them, or to not not arouse them in the first place. Yeah. Okay. And through we come to another wooden staircase, but also crucially, uh, a, a, an openable trap Trapped. door with with uh, uh, no, a great big watery cavern below. This is interesting. Oh, I closed it so I could. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's a flooded trap then. Mhm. Mm interesting. But again, in the context of a of a destroyable staircase, the trap at the bottom is intriguing. What well, this leads me to wonder: wait, for, I mean, is there anything down there? Is, it, is that is that something? If you swim down there, is there a does that you extend? Can check it out. Hmm. I mean, I don't have Lydia with me, so swimming should be fine. No, no. it just seemed to be a space to to drown. <laughs> interesting, interesting. And it looks like some people have been trapped down here, actually. Yeah. Okay. Some of them didn't see the chain. No. Some of them didn't see the chain. Okay, right, so, uh, what's up the stairs, then? Again, in this context of, of destroyable steps, actually, these are much less substantial than the ones that were on the entrance to, this, to, to the tomb. Indeed. Uh, to the barrel. And uh, there's still a doorway in the middle of the staircase. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. made of iron and obviously isn't destroyable. Yeah, yeah. But also, actually, in that sense, if you've got an iron door, if you were burning the stairs, the iron door won't be affected by that process. Indeed. Yeah. But you could never get to the door again. <laughs> no, no. But, well, but I, I, I mean, presumably, if... if you if, wouldn't if you, want to. Exactly, or, or, or you know, or destroying the steps is such an act of last resort or safety that, yeah, as you say, it, it wouldn't be a concern whether or not you could get back in this space. Uh, so in here we have actually quite a beautiful. Oh, hello! Wow! What? Why didn't they attack you? I don't know. Maybe I'm charming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, okay. Hello. <laughs> Uh, but but it's a rather beautiful space. Yeah, uh, I quite like the little window for moonlight to come in. Is that what that is? Yeah, it seems to be an yeah. opening up top. Yeah, it's quite pretty. Okay, little fern, fern, some fern growth as well. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, uh, so another, another again, another little private space, I think, a little antechamber almost. And then beyond this, you have. Oh. Some birds. Interesting. So do you think this is this is the nuts and bolts? Ooh. This is the, the workings of the. Um, now I'm going to do something that is uh, not advisable uh, if you want to preserve the space. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> let's take out the bow. Mm hmm. And as we can see, there's a small, small urn there with fire within it. Yes, there is, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is not best practice. It's not. But it saves you the risk of lose, of disturbing any other contexts with the, fighting the skeletons. Oh, I see. You've limited, you've limited the damage, the area of damage. I see, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but going back to the space. <laughs> yeah, well, but, 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 but um, so, this, so this is halfway up that wooden staircase. And we co so we come into this space that, that seems to have a sort of furnace and a, a central gathering area with a few different wooden ramps coming into it. And, and is this the only way into this area, is it? Um, let's see. I'm curious about this because here's a space with a treasure chest that I can't get into yet mm. uh, because it's blocked with mm -hmm. a and a a secret doorway. Ah, so that's and actually a door. This is, this is interesting, I think. Yeah. That you have hidden a doorway within basically a coffin. Yeah, a doorway that, look, that looks, like, looks like a coffin. Yeah. And so does that mean that potentially that little, uh, the, the, the viewing hole that you saw the treasure chest through wasn't always there? That maybe that's collapsed into the room or something? And um, this space was intended to be adequately hidden by that. I think so. Mm. Um, or that you're not meant to come from that end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you were going to come up these stairs, you wouldn't see it. No. No, that's true. Yeah. I see. And so, yeah, and so therefore. Again, with this, the sense that that little, little space that we pass through, with the, uh, the, the sunlight coming in, the one skeleton, yeah, that 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 wouldn't be, yeah, it wouldn't be normal people or average people passing through that space. But then again, in that sense, we've already kind of established that this whole oh, you can keep talking. That this whole area, um, this whole barrow, and this whole underground area wouldn't be for normal people. Uh, so, so. so is, is this where, uh, you know, if we sort of step outside ourselves for a second and acknowledge that we're playing a computer game, is this where actually we are seeing the um, the edges of the of the you know the stage curtain being revealed in that sense? Yeah, you know, that that for example that treasure being behind the the, the stone, uh, so the the, the tomb, uh, the door that's disguised as a tomb, by having mm -hmm. given us a little sneak peek of the treasure chest within. Is specifically designed like that because it's a computer game. I um, think so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it gives you the inclination to go look for an entrance. Yeah. Yeah. And so, well, okay. If we try and go, if we try and reconcile that though with with in in game logic, the in universe logic, could this whole space therefore be designed to be explored by the knowledgeable? In so much as uh, maybe. Could this be a series of rites of passage? Because some of these tombs are already open. Um, you know, you, you can see the doors that are fallen onto the floor. Tables have been smashed. Pots have been broken. And that might not necessarily be a, a result of looting. It could actually be that perhaps uh, in ancient times the people who were burying their dead here would also have to explore this place. Um, Indeed. Presumably, be very adept at dodging axes as well. <laughs> yes. But th that door also reveals something that, in in game, in lore, would mm. be interesting. 
that almost every door in here is open mm. Mm. or has a easy enough lock for you to be able to pick. Yeah, yeah. But that door requires a key. Mm. Which does. would suggest that that space is out of bounds uh -huh. for the ones exploring. Uh huh, uh huh. Yes, that's true. And so, what what possibly could be beyond that 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 door that uh, that warrants such well, actually, such obvious defence as well? That's a deterrent. That's not that's Indeed. not that's not designed that, to trap uh, you by accident. A reasonable person would not run up to that door and try and open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas the other the other trap so far, you what you set off by accident or through not knowing that they're there. Uh, otherwise, whereas that that's basically say this is here. Do not try and walk through this these things. So, do you, I mean, do you, do you happen to know how we get through there? Um, I can't remember it straight away. There's usually a lever on the other side of the trap uh -huh. that makes it stop, so you can go back safely. Oh. Uh, which, if I could find such a lever on this side would suggest that we came in through the back. But I can't see anyone. Uh, but I can't remember what's inside of there. <laughs> oh, that's well, frustrating. Well, could, could, the, could the key to this door be further on in the tomb then? Could it be higher up on, the, on that spiral staircase? Or do you think that it's more likely to be closer by? I'm going to check the Draugars I slayed. <laughs> you slayed? You mean you um, you preserved in situ? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's what I mean. Uh, there could also... This could be interesting if the key mm -hmm. is in here. But it's not. So it wasn't that. Because that would have been an interesting thing. Sort of relationship between those two. Yeah. But yes, I would I would think that the key is a quest item. <laughs> okay. Um, that's either further inside this tomb or somewhere else in Skyrim waiting to be found. Well, I, and Okay. Okay. Well, well, we'll bear that in mind then as we proceed. Uh, so up the uh, the wooden staircase and to another iron door. Locked. Master. Intriguing. This oh, might master. Take yeah. Master lock. Are you sure you cleared this barrow beforehand? I uh, have. <laughs> it was a year or so ago. <laughs> Oh. It's uh, it's a difficult thing being in a, in a Skyrim commercial unit, isn't it? It is. You think that you've cleared a, a space out so it's safe to observe, and it's full of uh, Draugr and Master Looks. Now here we all get to watch your um, your amazing unlocking skill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it just takes some time. Yeah, yeah. And we're in a locked space. Yeah. Is this the end of our excavation of this barrow? Could, yeah, it might be. It might be. It certainly shows sign of collapse. Maybe the key's in here. Oh, oh experts. Now, is expert harder than master? No. I like the way you quickly answer that, like I've cast dispersion <laughs> upon your unlocking skill. Uh, no, no, it's not. Oh, okay. Key. Well done. No. Okay. Ebony bow, though. Okay. I already have plenty of those. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing this the proper way, so I'm not going to loot that. No, exactly, I'm yes. even going to leave this grand soul gem. Exactly. Because it's important. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so with it being with it being left in place though, or with it with those things being left there, um, do you think that's a result of collapse, or do you think that that because you were talking about earlier about how people seemingly had left this left some of these areas quite quickly? Um, do you think that there was a moment when when people had to depart quickly? Like maybe the, I the would say became un- so. Un- I mean, poorly. throughout the barrel, we have seen things laying in places like they were just left there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and someone up and walked away mm-hmm. yeah that's true yeah 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 so I would say that, that that's very possible hmm now then I'm just um I might be doing a little bit of additional research on the barrow just for a second. Indeed. Here. I mean, we have another. We have a key to find. We do have a key uh, to find. We have a key to find. We have some questions to answer. Mm hmm. Uh, and I'm thinking that we might do that some other time. Possibly. I think, I think actually, uh, this barrow is in fact a little bit larger. Than, than I remembered remember. it being, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this has been uh, a good initial, indeed, t- initial foray into our archaeological survey of Skyrim, and I think, um, uh, well, frankly, I'm just glad to finally actually get this off the ground. So, uh, mm. we're, we're aiming, are we not, to, to do this every couple of weeks? We are aiming to, yeah, you know, best intentions and all that. And are you currently um, making your way out and resealing things as you go? Well, yeah, since we can't leave the proper way, mm-hmm. I need to <laughs> unlock this so we can. Ah, you see, you're clearly you're clearly not not thing. one of the initiated. <laughs> nope, I'm just an archaeologist trying yep. to <laughs> trying to get out. <laughs> So you I shouldn't, me, Mark. I shouldn't find this amusing because I'm yeah. I'm not, if I was playing this, I'd be like, ah, I'd be free. <laughs> and see, we're out. Okay, well done, well done. <laughs> I was just about to say, uh, we can also see how fast it takes to just walk out of the dungeon when you know how to do it. Hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> However, however, again, you get this very strong sense of there being, it's a staged, it's a, uh, it's almost like a, st- a staggered or staged retreat in that sense. It's a series of safety mechanisms and it definitely uh, demarks, I would say, an increasing threat level and an increasing desire to keep both things out and things in. Uh <laughs> So uh, yeah, okay, well done, well done. We fi- we finally got 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 the first of the of these explorations done, and uh, I don't mind um, uh, that that this has been a bit larger than we thought it was going to be. Because actually, maybe taking t- would it be would it be unreasonable to take two uh, two little episodes to to survey a tomb? I think not. No, no. Uh, I think not. I mean, I think also. Us not entirely knowing uh, the tomb before we go in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. gives a better experience as if how an archaeologist would view it. That's true, actually. Yeah. So in that sense, I don't feel too bad now because I just was okay. Oh, we didn't we didn't do our homework, but actually, you wouldn't do your, you wouldn't know what's you, in there. You would you wouldn't be able to do your homework. Exactly. Yes. Precisely. You can't you can't redo the survey or the experiment. The, the excavation. Okay, thank you. You've made me feel better. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Also, as well, I love the way the demonic horse is just is just looking at you, it's waiting for. It's a very for a... very nice demonic horse. He's a good horse, isn't he? He is. Oh. He keeps me safe. Oh. Well, thank you, Liv, and hopefully uh, this will be the first of many interesting explorations in Skyrim. And also, mm-hmm. hopefully, we'll be able to start coming. Start bringing together ideas as we look at other tombs and also look further into this tomb. For example, I'm I'm intrigued by those murals because I've never really really looked at them no. in other 
other two other barrows as well. So I wonder if they repeat in other barrows. And I wonder well, what they might mean. That's the thing that we can explore as yeah. we go through more barrows. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Okay, well, uh, thank you uh, for joining me, and also thank you everyone at home for watching and listening and uh, hopefully commenting or contributing, and uh, we look forward yes. to further adventures in the Skyrim Archaeological Survey. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>